let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Psalm 1914. Biblical meditation is so important. And it's very different than meditation that we would typically think of. I wanted to talk about and address what is biblical meditation and what it is not. We do not empty our minds. It is not about a mantra that we repeat over and over again. It is not um, about uh, focusing on self or inner thoughts. Biblical meditation is about the word of God. Biblical meditation, see, we aren't what we eat, we're what we absorb. I think about 1 Timothy 4.15. Take pains with these things, be absorbed in them so that your progress will be evident to all. Meditation allows for us not only to read the word, because to read it is important, to study it is important, to meditate on it, I meditate on your word day and night. It is to chew on it, to allow it to be digested. Did you know on average you're supposed to chew 32 times? Do you do that? I don't. But in doing that, it prepares the saliva within the gut to receive the food. Digestion literally starts in the mouth. It goes, yes, down the esophagus, but chewing it enough allows for proper nutrition to be absorbed. It also allows for um, digestion to go much easier so that you're not getting bloating and all of the rest of those things that can happen with food. So it's not only what we eat, but it's what we're absorbing from what we're eating. So if you ever find yourself reading chapters and chapters of the Bible just to not actually retain what it is that you read, <laughs> the word is living and active, sharper than a double-edged sword, dividing bone and marrow, soul and spirit. There's a surgery going on when we're reading the word. Well, when we meditate on that word and allow it to be absorbed into us, that is the transform that's transformation that's happening, that's correction that's happening, that's encouragement that's happening. But we have to sit there long enough in order for it to be absorbed. So what's interesting is from those 32 times on average that we're supposed to be chewing and the proper digestive enzymes going in, it also allows for portion control. You don't eat as much as you think you need to eat ever here. Their eyes are too big for their stomach um, because you're taking your time when you're eating. Also, it reduces the risk of bacteria overgrowth. What's interesting is your body plans on what it needs to digest the food based on how often and how much you chewed whatever it is is in your mouth. When we parallel that to the word of God, the fact that we can, okay, read the word over and and get it chew on it right jeremiah says he eats the word when we chew it when we really absorb it when we meditate on it it is allowing the word to expose some things to change some things holy spirit to convict us of some things and a transformation of heart circumcision to happen. We see biblically that there was meditation like Isaac that, that meditates, like David that meditates, right? Psalm 119 27 says, make me understand the way of your precepts and I will meditate on your wondrous works. 
have you ever found when we even go to pray and you may pray a quick prayer it's very different if you pause and sit in and deepen god you're wonderful yahweh you're wonderful you're wonderful in how you hold this whole earth together on how you know every hair on my head on how you make my heart beat it i don't have to think about it how intricate you've made your image bearers how you're dependable and reliable how you've kept me all these years even from myself when we sit there and don't simply quickly move god you're wonderful i thank you and here's my request it really draws us helping us to put on the mind of christ helping us to um helping us to appreciate and and adorn him helping us to uh, provide provide the adoration I mean, he's so worthy. And uh, in that meditation, there's train, there's change. Transcendental meditation and um, contemplative meditation are very, very different. So a lot of times we're thinking about when, I can't say we, I can say often, Prior to, all the time, prior to Christ, when I heard meditation, I was thinking about emptying myself. I was thinking about um, blanking my mind and controlling my breath. I was thinking about those practices that you would typically learn in a class like yoga, which is not biblical. Biblical meditation is pondering on the word of scripture with a receptive heart, trust in the Holy Spirit to work in you through those words. So that pondering, that meditation is really to weigh in the mind and reflect upon something. It's really beautiful when we think about meditation. It's okay, you Lord said, That you'll hold me up with my, your righteous right hand. What does that mean? Because I feel like I'm falling. You said. Don't be anxious. Oh, but right before that you said. Lord. I'm in your hands. Be anxious for nothing. But by prayer and supplication. Make your request known. What does that mean? that you really have me. Wait a minute, God, do I really believe that you have me? And, and meditating on the word can allow such a, such a beautiful discovery of, wait, am I agreeing with his word? And if I'm not, let me confess that. Let me agree on, Lord, you're dependable, you're reliable, you're holding me up with your righteous right hand. You're telling me not to be afraid, not to be in dismay but I am afraid and I don't feel like you'll hold me up. So I try to do it all by myself. Wait a minute, God. You told me you're, you're saying in the word that you do have me. And in that, rather than quickly moving through to the next verse in the next chapter. If we slow down and intentionally meditate sometimes, it can allow for a deeper understanding and an absorption of the word so that we can be um, transformed by it. Interestingly enough, there's a couple of different places in scripture that speak, that speak about meditation that I pulled up and it's, speaks about a whisper or a murmur another possibly a song which seed family worship on youtube is great it they sing scripture verbatim 
I play it with my kids all the time. Um, but Seat Family Worship sings that song. And as you're singing that verse over and over and over again, it gets absorbed. It gets, it gets absorbed. And even that whisper, when we're reading the word of God, hey, do you ever find yourself reading out loud, like under your breath? And meditating on that word would be reading that word, reading that sentence, and then reading that sentence, reading that verse, and really sitting in that verse. Like, Lord, what does that verse mean? Really? I love uh, reading and studying and the word of God with my children because they have fresh new eyes. So words that I may take for granted or automatically just know that I know them, they ask about. And so because they ask about it, we go on this search through the word. Mom, what does meditation mean? So now I get to go, let's go to the lexicon. Let's see what that word means specifically means according to the word of God rather than mommy defining the answer I don't have I am not the answer Yahweh is so let's go to his word and let's go through how to discover it that the word with the tools that he's provided so it's really beautiful by definition it implies careful consideration and focused attention so in the Old Testament, meditation in Hebrew, Joshua 1, 8, where God told Joshua to meditate on his law day and night. The word is also used in Psalm 1, verse 2, where we are told of the blessed person who delights in the law of the Lord, who meditates on his law day and night. So that meditation is that silent reflection to whisper, to murmur, it's beautiful. Biblical meditation is not about a focus on us. It doesn't start with us. It starts with the word of God. And the answer is not within my own feelings, within my own desires, within my own mind. The answer is in the word of God. So biblical meditation is allowing for a going over in our mind of the word of God. So what's interesting is that in the New Testament, meditation isn't used as often. Things like consider is are used instead. Um, and what's so interesting is if we slow down We'll see, we'll see the, the fruit of biblical meditation. It's not going to require um, certain breaths. Though you may breathe more slowly, it doesn't require a certain music or a certain stretch or a certain position. It requires the word of God. And delight in it you know when you when when you're at a fancy restaurant and they give you this smaller portion of food than we may be used to but we savor it we get to really enjoy it that is delight so even if we're taking one verse i um i i know that i'm very in my flesh goal oriented i know that i am I can be driven to accomplish a goal verse and, and and miss the mark because my goal is about quantity versus quality. And I need it corrected in that. Years ago, I'm going to get this whole word in at this particular speed. So I need to read this many chapters a day. And as I over ate and I was stuffed. I couldn't process all that I was eating. So it was beautiful to be able to, to, to intentionally 
at times slow down. And there's such a beautiful combination when you're reading, studying, meditating, praying, and how all of those can flow with each other, through each other. It's beautiful. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you help us, Father, to meditate on your word day and night. That um, you would help us to, 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 to read your word and dig deeper in your word. Help us to have fresh and new eyes and uh, in a way that a, a child does in excitement to come into your word. Help us to set aside time, Lord God. Help us to be intentional. You've given us self-control and you've given us discipline through your Holy Spirit. So Father, help us to beat down our flesh Help us to be intentional like we are with other things. We have intentionality in our life through other means. Help us to be intentional with your word. You are our sustenance. You are the bread of life. And we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness, that you are dependable, that you are God, that you are love, and that you choose to love us. And that we have the honor, the privilege to love you. In Jesus' Yeshua's name, amen.